that it shows. Oh, there was a pothole, there we go. Yeah, look at the time, nearly half past four. Why am I so late going anywhere? Well, I'm not really going anywhere. I just thought I'd uh, stop myself from going stir crazy. <laughs> Introduce myself to quite a few new subscribers. I don't understand why they've suddenly subscribed. Did you spot my Beatles ad? Are they all beetle nuts? Yeah, too late for Aldi as well. I normally go to Aldi on a Sunday, get a few bits and then call in that real ale pub. And me and uh, Tony Kitchen were in there on Friday, working six till two, and I didn't have out to eat. <laughs> and then Tony came over, so I went to the pub, I had two pints in my local and then two pints in that real ale pub. Very pleasant evening, and I still didn't have to, anything to eat because the bloody takeaway had closed at the time we came out. I was going to have a curry to uh, get shut of the last remnants of my cold. Still coughing. The girl at work said, Yes, cold last two weeks, but you're left with a cough for five weeks, and I think she's right. Oh, that's that new, uh, newly done up pub, the park. It was a bit of a dive before, let's have a look. It's alright Mavis. Hello little stud, little spud. My uncle used to live down here, he died. And his wife, should I say, it's very depressing. His wife, my auntie was... <coughs> His wife was so depressed about his death, she just couldn't go on and she took her own life. <clears throat> and it's left us with a, a terrible guilt complex. Maybe, well, certainly we should have gone to see him more, you know, when you people don't know, really, when people are depressed, we should put two and two together if someone has died. We should be keeping an eye on the welfare and see if they're coping. all changed now. He built one of those sort of wooden love seats, you know, and a nice fence and a lovely garden, but it's like it's all been cleared away. No. Justin. Yeah, I'm on that Facebook page, that Great Old Past and Present, which all those old photos are on. And it keeps mentioning this, saying it's a gastro pub and it's all been painted up grey. It's a sort of a trendy colour, isn't it, grey? That's very nice. New furniture outside. Locally sourced fresh seasonal food, fine wine, spirits and ale. Oh, look at that big brass lamp, that's nice. wonder if my auntie and uncle ever came here. But like I said before, this has been done up. A bit of a dive before, although they did have acts on it once, saw an Elvis act here, years ago. Because it's off the beaten track from the town centre, it's not something you'd include in a pub crawl. That car of lane on that uh, archway outside. 
Hmm. Let's have a look in sometime. Pub should be patronised more, I think, because there's so many shutting down. There's a report in the paper by camera, a campaign for real ale saying they thought it was a good sign because it said, oh, there used to be 50 pubs a week closing down, now it's down to about 30. And someone said, no, it's because there's less bloody pubs to shut down and they're still closing down at the same rate, there's just so few pubs left that therefore the rate has reduced. And I've asked this before, why do people not go in pubs? Some of them are surrounded by lots of houses. <coughs> I mean, we're going past a pub down here, that's a country pub that do gastro stuff, a carvery, a very cheap Sunday carvery. And you know, you need to drive and have a nominated driver that's going to stay sober to visit those, but pubs around you by terraced houses and they're empty. What's wrong with people? Are they all like what I've just been doing, stuck in watching the bloody television? I was watching Shed and Buried again. Well, it was quite interesting because they bought an old AGS for £1,050. You know, after rummaging through someone's shed. It was a twin as well, but it had no lights on. A bit hit and miss that show, as I was saying to Alan Bolter. <laughs> Some of them are interesting if they, f if they find a bike. That's what we watch it for, because Henry Cole's a bike enthusiast. But some are just faffing around. In fact, I just left it when they were looking at a stationary engine. They have their own little clique of uh, enthusiasts, a little chugging engine, about two horsepower, used on farms and people get all enthused about them. Although if you look on my videos at that steam rally I went to, there's uh, a long row, in fact it's a twin row like a street at this uh, steam rally. <laughs> and there's about 30 little engines chugging away, chug 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 chug, part of the a light bulb or operating a water pump. There have been all chaps out there on a deck chair reading a book. Not taking money, you just stop at each one and... Oh, ah, 1923 Lister, one horsepower, choo, 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 choo. And next one, 1933 Lister. There's lots of different makes, but... I suppose I could see the attraction if it was chugging away in my backyard, pumping water into a fountain, you know what I mean? That would be nice. That would be nice, a little fountain, a little water feature. Are you getting bored yet? Yeah, I thought I'd go to Clitheroe because... Uh, guess what time I woke up? <laughs> I went to bed at half past two, after going to the bog at two o'clock. So I went to bed at half two in the morning. Woke up at eight. Ooh, put a toe out to bed. Ooh, I thought, no, I'll go back to sleep. I need more sleep. Because it's uh, working shifts at Bugger's area. Uh, more, more metabolism is that the word? It does, you know, because working six till two, you go to bed at eight, try and get to sleep. Nice, isn't it? Rolling nab. Try and get to sleep, and you wake up bloody, the alarm goes off at uh, ten past four. Give me time for a six hour shave shampoo. Come home from work at half past two, totally knackered. This is what happened Friday. And then, like I said, I was umming and on about what to have for my tea. So I go and buy some eggs and make a mushroom omelette, prawn omelette. But no, I'll treat myself to an Indian curry and flush this cold out. And it didn't happen. And then Tony got in touch. I'm coming over. All oh, right, good. Went to the pub. No food at the pub. And I thought I'll get an Indian. And then it was my, it's my fault because I suggested if you want to look at that old real ale pub, the Royal Hotel. Yeah. And it was a delicious beer, Hop, Hop something, all got funny names. So I had a couple of pints of that. And of course, when we came back, the bloody Indian was just closing, they were mopping up and cleaning. I could have got something from elsewhere, but I didn't. I used to fast on Fridays anyway, like Michael Jackson did. And look at what a healthy lad he was. <coughs> yeah, fasting Fridays. 
I think we eat too much anyway. Yeah, so like I said, I don't know about what time I woke up. Yeah, I went to bed at half past two. Woke up at eight this morning, went back to sleep. Woke up, looked at the clock. 2.50 p.m., 10 to three. And I missed, I missed two calls from Paul Taylor at Losing Clitheroe, where I'm going now. I went to the pub with him last Saturday. So yeah, made, meeting up with subscribers and going to the pub. Come to my house, make him a brew, have a natty. Actually, Paul tried a couple of jackets on and they sort of fitted. Because I've got a dozen, well more, about 15 leather jackets from when I used to be well off. And have a good job, plus I lived at my mum, so I had lots of money to spend. I built a collection of leather jackets up, which was silly because they last forever, don't they? A couple of them are actually unworn. And I sent some to help Cat Harley in exchange for this bike jacket I have. It's a swap, and I still have about 15. <laughs> you only need two or three, a winter jacket, a summer jacket, and something smart you can wear socially. And I've not got three, I've got 15. Yeah, so I looked out the window and I thought, oh, if I'd have got up at 11, that would have been a good sleep. And I could have gone on a ride on the bike. A proper ride somewhere interesting rather than just a tootle like this is. I'm only going to go to Rivington, I'm not going to the seaside because there'll be bloody ghost towns, won't they, this time of year. I had a bit of a worry, can you hear me? The crackling if there's wind noise. Can you hear me, mother? <laughs> it's turned out damp again. Oh, a couple of spots of drizzle. And we had a bit of a scare on uh, Friday. Not a physical scare with the bike, but I thought my camera had gone tits up. I swapped my SD cards around because uh, I was saving one for Paul. Paul King. And now I've got that back, I didn't swap my card around again and it had an old PNY in. That was a manufacturer, PNY. And it's worn, you know, even the label's wearing off. So that was in my commuting camera and I did a vlog all about what happened on Wednesday. An electrical scare. So I got home, stuck it in my computer, my laptop. Nothing. It hadn't registered. Ooh. Shit. So uh, I put a new, newish sand disc in, you know, my proper spare sand disc. And it's fine. So that's a relief, because I've always said if these two cameras I have go pear-shaped I'm afraid I'll have to give up my videos. I'm not going to fork out for another expensive camera when <coughs> when these ping out. Hi, there's a mist over Pendle, hi! Anyway, the scare I had on Wednesday, come home from work at half past two, because so we're on the six till two, put the kettle on as usual. What's that smell of burning? Horrible burning plastic smell. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And the kettle boiled sufficiently to make it, well, it knocked off, so it did boil properly. Went to the front room, I could hear the radio bzz, 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 crackling. I thought, well, it's shitty radio Lancashire again with a weak signal. Put the telly on and the light on top of the telly was flickering and the smell was even worse. I went into the kitchen, I couldn't see any smoke but there was a strong burning smell. Is it the kettle? I it's coming from near the kettle. Switch the kettle on, nothing dead. And then I tried to uh, open the fridge, no light on. Flick the light switch to the utility room which leads to the backyard, nothing. Still bad fish, isn't it? I'll adjust those. Oh, there yeah, I got it. The convex lenses, I'll adjust them. When I do my big spring clean, it's still a bit earlier. Yeah, so it was panic stations. Oh, shit. So I got my screwdrivers out. Oh, this is that new estate Paul was on about. I was saying, yeah, they build these new estates, but they're still using the bloody Victorian sewage system, all little run downhill. 
into an area that's prone to floods and after they be getting bloody drains blo blocked up and backed up again because you just join everything onto the old Victorian sewers not going to build any new sewers it's such a massive job ridiculous isn't it completely ridiculous so we'll see when I worked at that conservatory place ultra frame it once flooded but that was only a stream as a stream runs the side of the hill and when it pisses down it just floods and the entire street was about two foot deep so that's what I mean all these houses are all channeling the waste into one big drain which joins on to the other drains at the bottom of this hill they don't consider it do they planners well what about the drains well we'll join them onto the other drains be right <laughs> Maybe they should put notices through people's doors. Don't all go for a shit at the same time. Don't be flushing your bogs. If one of you go, if you stagger it to a 30 second shit and then somebody else goes after another 30 second. Have you been? No. Well, get gone now. We don't want to be flushing our toilets all at the same time. It'll flood. <laughs> yeah, that's solution. Yeah, anyway, this electrical problem. I rung my mum up because my mum lives there and my grandma's old house. She said, oh yeah, you need it kettle. I said, yeah, she said, well there's a socket behind there. I said, a socket? Yeah, your grandma's little fridge used to be there. Look at that decorating centre. Used to be an ancient pub called The Bridge. It's a nice old picture. I'll try and edit it in if I can use the editor. Yes, yeah, so I pulled this drawer unit out and sure enough there's an old socket with a wire going in the top a bloody, you know, imagine mounting a bloody socket on a damp wall because next door it's their backyard I've got a lean-to kitchen and they haven't so there's a socket with two wires going in the same wall even though there were two walls there were rubber ring round but that's no good because there's no silicone maybe it was installed before silicone was invented <laughs> yeah, very low, that's where I used to work down there. I nearly bought an house there to be near work and then I got the chop. Yeah, so mum said, yeah, there's an old fridge there. And then when it was scrapped off and grandma got another second hand fridge, a big uh, you know, a big tall freezer, fridge freezer. There was a drawer unit put there instead. I said, oh, hmm. Anyway, so I knocked the power off. It looked all right, but I took the cover off and bzz, bzz, it was all there, melted. Imagine sufficiently hot to melt copper cable. It just frazzled back into the insulation. It smells nice. I wonder what the curry's like. I like to sit in a restaurant, not too keen on takeaways and eating at home. Yeah, so like I said, not the power off, stripped all the cables back and I was looking around for another switch, you know, a, a metal back box and I thought, hang on, what am I thinking of? I don't want to fit another bloody socket and switch. Junction box. So I went to the local cheapo shop that's got to do it yourself. The reason is, this guy's a do-it-yourself centre in his shop because the three do-it-yourself shops in town have closed down. An old chap retired and the two others weren't doing any business so they shut down. What do you think he had left? Just one, one circular junction box with four, you know, four holes in four inputs. Oh yeah, sorted. So I'll come back, fitted it, siliconed uh, where the wires went in, just in case there were any drips. Look at that old advert, the new Jackie Chan costume company. Love stuff like that. Old historical town, but I think I've covered Clitheroe enough. <laughs> See if that bar is open. Escape for a coffee and cocktails. I was telling Paul Taylor about it. I think it's well worth a visit because next door is a little real ale bar there, the ale house. So that with Maria then. I used to work with a right attractive girl called Maria. And she was a bit naughty really because she left her husband to have an affair with the well paid manager. 
he left his wife and teenage children for her and then she ditched him because she was getting too controlling therefore she broke up a happy home it's amazing isn't it how a bloke, so called sensible manager can be swayed by an attractive girl she was beautiful big fat ass but she was gorgeous so I think I might no if, if I was happily married I wouldn't be tempted away by a young bird I don't think if you've got a healthy love life why go mounting other girls <laughs> I thought that was her she's uh, got pregnant by another lad now and she's had a baby when her mum was ha uh, I think she was fully Spanish her mum was Spanish so therefore she was half Spanish so that's why she had uh, gorgeous brown eyes long flowing black hair beautiful Anyway, where was I? Oh, that's it really. I fitted a junction box, silicone round the wires. <coughs> I could have turned then, couldn't I? Got me high vis on. Thank you. And uh, then gingerly switched the mains back on after I'd finished doing the wiring and wallop. Everything's fine. Because I was panicking, because I thought if it doesn't work, it must be something else. There was a possibility it might have frizzled the bloody fridge circuit out and all those wires are behind the panelling. I've got um, pine panelling. Still not there. That's still a Dennis truck. I gave him a little, that toy Dennis I had. Is it on the other side? Oh, sorry, that's another truck. Yeah, Dennis one's up here. It was five pound off eBay. I'm going to use it as a mascot on this bike before I found Grover. They've moved the truck, haven't they? they put shelves there. Move that truck so it doesn't look like a Danish truck. Let's have a look. Yeah, they put tables there to make it into a restaurant cafe. I think. Always faffing about moving stuff. Yeah, I was slightly annoyed because I thought I've, maybe it was my silly drunken idea, but I was sober when I took it over. <laughs> I said, I brought a little Dennis mascot to put on your Dennis truck. I said, what? I said, that truck's called a Dennis. That's not a Dennis, is it? Can I have lights on every production? TV studio lights. Have you been here? Has my vlogs inspired you to visit here? It's well worth a visit. I was on a night out at the pub park or the restaurant park with your wife for a nice meal. I told someone at work and said, Oh, it's expensive there. We had a look at the menu and walked out. I said, Oh, yeah, I paid £12 for my giant hot dog, but you pay for the surroundings and you had to pay all the staff and pay for all the decor. I said, You're paying for, not for the food, you're paying for the luxurious surroundings and the interesting things to look at. If we're into all this industrial look. I should ask for Dennis back, but I do have another one. There's two different Dennis and Nasher figures. What are you doing, Albert? They look posh, don't they? Lots of posh people around Clitheroe. Oh well, so much for that. Wonder where Paul lives. Yeah, yeah little hooligans. I'm, well, I mean, they're all right because they're little scooter things, but people have been killed with people riding bicycles on pavements, haven't they? Very naughty. They shouted, sorry, sorry. <laughs> they couldn't stop. Ah, oh, well. Can I know, it's an old row of cottages. 
been in here, this was called the Craven Ephraim, now it's closed down, see what I mean? Clear Road Business Centre, so they're closing bloody pubs and they're becoming other things. I think I'll stop the camera here because I'm going to check out this new little estate, some new, uh, oh, how do you get to it? Exit, no entry. It's down here, isn't it? Yeah, there's an Aldi. A pets at home, which is handy. Although I just sent for some catnip via eBay. Quarter pound of catnip, six pound with three posts. Oh, vets for pets. Pet grooming, vet surgery, pet shop. Hmm. Close. It will be look at time, nearly five o'clock. And yet more house building. And I imagine they'll be rather expensive. They say there's no houses for young people to step on the housing ladder. People just can't afford if they're in crap minimum wage jobs. So therefore it's misery all round. Hmm, <coughs> that's at home. Poor Ginger's losing his fur again, so I thought of getting some other type of flea treatment. I got some drops, but they're a total waste of bloody time. He's losing his fur, and when I mentioned, when I took him f uh, to the vets a month ago, he said, oh yes, it's an allergic reaction to the flea bites. I said, yeah, well, my house is infested because of a bloody stray cat. And that stray cat actually pissed last week, so I chucked him out. They've got a box of sleeping outside, so I feed him outside, but because of this cold weather, last night, I said, come on then, you can come in. So, <laughs> It's for being soft, and I love cats, I can't see him getting cold. So little Bobby and Scruffy the Stray are back in. So we're back to the flea epidemic. I do have lots of sprays, so I think the idea is... Keep the cats outside, lock them out of a room, spray the room with flea spray, leave it for an hour, then hoover up. I've got my carpet washer. Drown the little bleeders, as Stactor said. Drown the little bleeders! And then do room to room like that. Lock them in that room when everything's dried up. And then do the other room with flea spray. But if you have cats, especially if you have two, three or four like me, two officially, but I let these two strays in, then you're going to have flea trouble. Wait till summer comes, but the winter yet. Yeah. Although winter, that's when all the legs, the legs, all the eggs hatch into larvae. Legs. <laughs> I was going to say larvae. So I was saying, I was talking to Paul Taylor, I said I'll have to dust you down with flea powder. And they were laughing. I started itching, I was <laughs> scratching my hairy chest. I said, I think I've got a flea. He said, no, as we're talking about it, you think you can feel yourself itching. <laughs> we're still recording. I didn't give this a full charge, this camera. Oh, what was that? Every time you were a pop, it's either a stone or a bloody screw going in. A bloke at work had a long screw in his little long screw. A bloke at work had a long screw in his back tire on a little scooter. It's a nice little thing actually. I said, I love one of you. You're a big little scooter, you've got a nice big bike. I said, I know, but that's my bike I like to keep nice and shiny. And uh, a little scooter would be a good winter commuter to go to work on even little 50cc we go, you know, not on the motorway of course but on the roadway although like I said you can get compact scooters which are 300cc will do 80 or 90 miles an hour like that Aprilia and like the Vespa and I think Honda do one as well but you've got the leg protection your brakes are both here I think the right hand one is your back brake left hand one is your front brake I've got a smiley face, we're doing 25 miles an hour. Mm. Yeah, and you've got the full leg protection, no gear, just twist and go. So your legs are tucked behind all the plastic bodywork, your knees are protected from the cold. And I think little wheels have uh, the more opportunity to warm up, therefore 
less inclined to slip on slippy surfaces. I see you came during a snowfall, I saw you're right on that in the snow. Oh yes. I said yeah, because you haven't got the acceleration, you know the chance of doing the wheel spin and losing control. Although I went to work on Tuesday, I was crapping myself because it, it felt cold but I couldn't see any ice in the backyard. So I set off. And then there seems to be shiny patches, worse than this, just shine, you know, street lights were shining on every corner. Shit, is that a sheet of ice? All you do is ease off the revs and chug around the corner and then gently accelerate in a higher gear. You know, don't rev the ice off it and have the wheel spinning and losing control and losing your traction, you just take it easy. But when, I've, when I had the electrical problem, I phoned for a taxi because I knew the bike, because the bike wasn't getting a charge in the backyard because that power was off. I knew it would be flat, so I got a taxi and he, where's your bike? Because he knows me, where's your bike today? Oh, I said, I'll have a blowout electric. So I said, I think, uh, what? Have you turned everything off? I said, no, why? I said, well, there's a bottle of milk in the fridge. <laughs> It'll go off, it's a bottle of milk. Your house could burn down and you worry about one pound bottle of milk. I said, you're right, you're right. House burned down, so I was thinking all day. The rat taxi driver's right. Your back bottle of milk. I should have knocked all the power off, just in case. In fact, that's what this vlog's about. Check your power. When did you have to have, have a rewire? And the taxi driver said, rewire cost 2,000 pounds. My friend had it done. I said, oh, fire, can't afford that. But like I said, luckily it didn't come to that. Anyway, so yeah, I was panicking at work and I said to the supervisor, can I go at 12? I, co I could go anyway because I'm only on six hour contract. It's ancient, isn't it? No day at all. <coughs> and why? I said I've had an electrical scare. Everything blew out yesterday afternoon and I've left the power on. And it could be burning as I speak. So I went home and everything was fine luckily and then I tackled the job and sorted it and then Bob's your uncle. That new wine boy, somebody said there's a new... Is it a shop or a, a bar? See lots of posh people here, they look posh don't they? Oh yes, I'm a retired director of my own company here. Jeans and a jacket. Designer jeans, £100 a pair. Can you ride tandem? Can you, can you ride tandem? Hehe! <laughs> What's the date on there? 1780. Modern carved date, but... I do like a date stone. Proper original one with the curly sixes. In 1781, that. Not ancient, but imagine being around then it was all the sea. Sea, the sea scene. <laughs> no, those maritime, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, would that be the 1780s? I'm just blathering, you know, just, I'm just blathering for something to say so I'm not staying silent, like some do. <laughs> yeah, that pub in my town is 1788 and 1789 was mutiny on the bounty. So all these 1780s have been built when all that scene was going on, you know, seafaring, Britain was a leader of the world in shipping and big battles at sea. Mr. Christian! Mr. Christian! This is mutiny, Mr. Christian! You dirty dog, Bly! That's a proper one, isn't it? Marlon Brando. Proper film. I didn't like the Mel Gibson remake. I was discussing that with Paul Taylor, we've done a swap, I'll give him my DVD of the day the earth stood still and the remake as well, I know the words to the Michael Rennie 1951 version, if you can have that and I said the remake, it's absolute crap it's in the original, go at the robot as a starring role but in the remake he doesn't in the sci-fi film is all about the robots and the aliens
Because a mushy leaves in the middle, that looks dodgy, don't you? Imagine that making me wheel spin if I was accelerating, overtaking. So I like to think I'm a safe rider, only overtake when it's safe, only go fast in a straight line. I slow down slightly, just easing off the throttle on bends. Because somebody said about uh, mainta maintaining speed round bends, that's the IAMS Institute of Advanced Motorcyclists take on it. I said, ooh, I don't. I use off the throttle. Just look at that patch of gravel there. I said on bends, there's either potholes like that, crap like that, or I lose gravel to slip on. So I slow down on bends, don't lean over on that shit. So, so much for the Institute of Advanced Motorcycles, it's only trying to kill us or what? Ride with common sense. At 100 mile an hour. Slow down here because it's a garden centre. Been a lot of nasty accidents here with grannies pulling out with a plant there, no, I can't, plant plots. Plant plots on the back seats, pull out and cause a few accidents. That's that pub with a carvery. Good price on. Enjoy your favourite roast with us, game cocking. And this here, this Chekhov's Pizza, was a biker meeting cafe. Also the cafe racer scene, the local cafe racer scene in the 50s and the 60s. I mentioned it before. There's a picture of some British bikes whizzing past and some girls sat on the fence. Isn't it funny how history passes? Where you die off and everything continues. Still recording. It's going to be a long upload. This. What is it? Forty minutes. To feel going. Oh, that's all right. I've only pressed my toys in order. Yes. Hello, indicators, Albert. Uh, uh, hmm. Last minute. That's a new football pitch. The other one was sloping, so they rebuilt a nice pitch and flattened it out. Trouble is, that's a showground where a circus is on every Easter and the agricultural show's on. Unless you still have that on a different field. And look at this, this was the old football pitch and now it's been sold to housing. Is it housing? Yeah, look at that. Linden Park, a selection of two, three, and four bedroom homes, starting at 180 grand probably. So a young couple setting out in life aren't going to be able to afford those on a mortgage are they? And here we are back at the park. And he's got his beer blanket on, t-shirt in this freezing weather. Because uh, have a couple of beers and you feel warm. Imagine sleeping till 10 to 3, lazy bastard. I like them little smart cars. No, like I said, it was because I was just exhausted. A week of 6 till 2s and then not sleeping properly. Because it's a bug again to sleep at 8 o'clock when people are still making noise outside. And on this shift next week, even that's hard work. Because the idea is you go to bed about 2 a.m. Wake up at 10, but they often wake up at 8 because of the school run. My neighbours slamming their bloody car doors at 8 o'clock. Mm. I was alright when I used to work day shift, no messing about with lack of sleep. But uh, I should stop mourning really, at least I'm in, in a job, lots of people aren't. I don't think I'm on too much to her. Oh, that's it's open. See that fade out, the Royal Sultans. Hello, hello, table for one, table for one. Yep, table for one. 
Are you Billy No Mix? Yep. <laughs> yeah, they have curries, but they make it worse. You know, them jack of all trades that do kebabs and curries aren't proper Indians. So, oh well, find out, I'll try one. Anyway, bye for now.